guys, I'm looking at Rosalind today. I had a request from Casey to have a look at Rosalind's and why I pray you who might be your mother monologue from As You Like It. I've had a few As You Like It requests, so I will have a playlist of those and I'll link it all in the description below. So before I jump in, I actually want to start with character for Rosalind because, oh man, Rosalind, I've never really jived with Rosalind. I've always been like, man, you're just so annoying. Why are you, why are you even doing this with Orlando? Like, what, just, I don't know, tell me you like him. What's going on? And I think it's taken me a while and a bit of research really to understand kind of what's the deal with Rosalind. And I think it can be really helpful to understand for this monologue. My take, and you know, this is certainly something that I've researched has come from other people as well, is that Rosalind is someone who's very uncomfortable with love, with expressing herself um, and with being herself generally, I think. And it makes a lot of sense because, you know, her dad was exiled and she kind of has to live on eggshells. That's her, her life is like living on eggshells when she's at court. And when she goes to the forest of Arden and she dresses up like a boy and she becomes Ganymede, it's like she's free and you just set her free and she just says what she's thinking and she just is kind of crazy and she just kind of lets herself fly and like live live openly and live freely and, and kind of crazy and vulnerable. And it's sort of great, but it's also hard to watch, which I think is very real. And if you've ever seen anyone go through that process where they're like, you know, finding themselves and they're just doing all this crazy stuff because they haven't really learnt yet to find the balance of like being true to themselves and not, you know, saying really rude things to people and being a complete crazy whack job. And that's what I think anyway. So I think it's really useful to think about here because basically what's happening in this monologue is that she's given Phoebe a pretty hard time. And even though Phoebe is maybe not the brightest and she is very arrogant, sure, Rosalind's really laying into her and Sylvia. She really just says what she thinks. And I think in order, like for me personally, if I were playing her, in order to kind of accept that element about her and not be like judging her for just being a bit of a bee to people, like, you know, you're ugly and, you know, your breeding's not that good. She, you know, it's kind of rude, some of the stuff she's saying. And I think because you never really want to be judging your character when you're playing them, I think it's really helpful to be thinking about everything she's come through and that she's just suddenly found this freedom and she doesn't really know how to use it yet. And hopefully that helps you with like not, not judging her when you're performing her. Maybe you weren't judging her anyway. Maybe it's just me. And I think it's worth layering some of that stuff on. So underneath everything that's going on is her kind of thrill at being able to speak openly to people. And she's just kind of like a runaway train. And I don't necessarily think that you have to necessarily play that directly or play it obviously. But I think it's something to connect with when you perform is that thrill of like, if you've ever been someone that's held your tongue, that's never been comfortable speaking your truth, and now you are, there's gonna be a certain level of delight happening when you're ripping into someone. So there's stuff going on there underneath. So if you're you know, a bit more experienced as an actor and you feel like you can kind of layer that, that's the stuff. The next thing to look at, of course, is the context. You really have to understand what's just happened before. Silvius and Phoebe have been having a big argument, basically, because Silvius is following Phoebe like, you know, just a crazy lovesick person and saying stupid, not really romantic things to her. And Phoebe is saying, go away, Silvius. And also, you are not romantic. And I've done a breakdown video of that one of Phoebe's as well. I would not be the executioner. So you might want to have a look at that to get a bit more of the context of that if you have time. And Rosalind has been watching them. And I think it's very interesting to her because these are two like country people being very country bumpkin and not really kind of getting the idea of the wooing and the courtly lingo. And I think she's like, okay, this is interesting and fascinating. And also she's sort of judging them and being like, 
hang on a second, especially Phoebe. And her first response is to kind of attack Phoebe for being a bit too big for her boots, basically, for being a bit arrogant and above herself by not accepting Sylvia's, which I think in itself is quite arrogant of Rosalind because she's basically like, hey, you guys are like equal country people. You guys should just get together. Why are you being so arrogant? Like, geez, Rosalind, like, get off your high horse. I think she's a little bit triggered by Phoebe because Phoebe is denying someone her love for kind of no good reason. And I think that gets to Rosalind a bit. That is just my take on it. I think Rosalind is so scared of being rejected. I think she's so scared to express her love. I think she's so sick of having to keep everything inside her that when she sees someone turning someone else down, so when she sees Phoebe being like, no, Sylvia, I don't want you and go away and you're not smart and I don't like your way of courting me. I think Rosalind is like, you stupid cow. And I think it really gets to her because I personally think for her, the idea of putting herself out there and just telling someone that she likes them, loves them, um, that's someone being Orlando in this case, but I think just generally, and having that person just be like, go away and you are rubbish at courting and you know, why are you even talking to me? Why are you chasing me? you know, I don't love you, I don't, you don't deserve me. I think for her, that's like her worst nightmare. So when she sees Phoebe doing that to Sylvia, she immediately wants to uh, kind of defend Sylvia because she relates more to Sylvia in this case than Phoebe. I hope that makes sense. Please drop me a comment if you're like, what? Or I disagree because I'd really like to hear what you think about that. I think it can be an interesting key. And again, all this stuff is kind of layering and you might find you don't even need that information. But if you're a bit more experienced, you might be like, great, I really get that in terms of like an objective. Like why is she saying this stuff to Phoebe? Why is she attacking her? I think that there's this deep down need to like set things aright and say, no, 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 this guy is like being nice to you and you're on the same level as him. This is not how love works. I'm wanting to put the world in order, especially when it comes to love. So Phoebe has just been saying to Sylvius, you know, go away and I don't like you basically. And Sylvius responds, oh dear Phoebe, if ever, as that ever may be near, you meet in some fresh cheek, the power of fancy. So basically, if you ever like someone, and maybe that'll be sooner rather than later. A little bit of foreshadowing there. Thank you, Shakespeare. Yes, it will be sooner rather than later because Phoebe is about to fall for Rosalind in a second. Thank you, Sylvia. This is just setting it all up for us. Then shall you know the wounds invisible that love's keen arrow makes. So like, basically, you'll understand if you ever like someone like I, like you, you'll understand. And then Phoebe responds with like, well, yeah, but until then, just go away and... When that happens, sure, you know, make fun of me then. I don't even care, but don't pity me if that happens to me, because I'm not gonna pity you. And so this is where Rosalind basically interrupts them. She's just been watching them this whole time. So I think that gives you a little bit of a clue as to her energy coming in. Something in that last bit of what Phoebe said about don't pity me has really driven her to move forward and be like, but why? Like, and she's quite, you know, direct about all of this. So there's going to be a bit of clarity and a bit of energy going into this monologue. One of the things you definitely need to think about before you do this monologue is about focus. Where are the people that she's talking to? Because she will sometimes talk to Sylvia's and sometimes talk to Phoebe. And you might decide that one is over there and one is over there, or they might be standing kind of together. But you need to figure out your eyeline and make sure you rehearse the eyeline really understand and I will break this down for you who she's talking to and when. And just quickly before we jump into the line by line breakdown, I just want to say if you're finding this useful, can you like or subscribe or share or just comment? Anything can really help me get out to more people and that makes me super super happy to help more of you out there that are doing all your prep for auditions and exams. So let's jump now into the line by line breakdown. So she starts with, and why I pray you? And this is a response to Phoebe saying, I'm not gonna pity you to Sylvia's. She's basically saying like, why won't you pity him? Like, are you so above him that you get to just insult this guy? And so this is about the who might be your mother. She just means like, are you a princess? Are you a goddess? Why do you get to insult this guy? And the exalt is like, she's also gets to kind of, 
I guess, enjoy the process of like him putting her on a pedestal while she's attacking him. So that's all at once. Like while she's attacking him, he's still putting her up on this pedestal over the wretched. It's like, you're insulting this. The wretched is Silvius, like this poor dude. You're insulting him. He's putting you up on a pedestal. Are you some sort of God? Why don't you have any feeling, like not just feeling feelings for him, but why do you not have any feelings at all? You're being horrible is basically what Rosalind is saying. This is unreasonable behavior. And as I said before, it is reasonable for Rosalind to be like, hey, random country girl, that is not nice behavior. She's just kind of sticking up for Sylvia's, fair enough. But she's already kind of attacking her breeding a little bit. You, you know, the extent of that you can choose. And then she goes on to attack her beauty, like her looks, her lack of beauty, I said, maybe. So she says, what though you have no beauty? As by my faith, I see no more in you than without candle may go dark to bed. So uh, just to clarify in case you're not familiar, by my faith is kind of like by God, but they don't say by God on stage. So she's just kind of like almost sort of swearing or emphasizing there. I see no more in you than without candle may go dark to bed. This is an interesting one. And I've, I've heard a diff couple of different interpretations of this one. So you might need to choose because I'm not sold on, on any of the interpretations actually. For me, I feel like she's saying, I see as much beauty in you as I would see if I were wandering around in the dark trying to go to bed without a candle. That's my take on it. But people have also said that because Phoebe has a lack of beauty, she doesn't light up a room. And so she's not the kind of girl that can go without a candle to bed because her beauty is not glowing enough, basically. Um, and there are other interpretations of that line as well. So that's one of the one, it's kind of a weirdy line where you just make a choice for yourself as to what you think it is. And as long as you understand it in your own mind, usually that's enough for an audition. Must you therefore be proud and pitiless? So basically like you don't really have much special breeding and you're not like super pretty or anything. So why are you so arrogant? So proud really here, she just means like arrogant and pitiless, like no feelings, like completely, you know, heart of stone, heart of stone, Phoebe. Now, there is a shift here and it's really important that you recognize that something has happened here. During her saying all this, basically laying into Phoebe, Phoebe has fallen for her hard. Like just in those like couple of lines, Phoebe has seen her dressed as a boy and gone, you know, oh my goodness, I love him. So when Rosalind says, why, what means this? Why do you look on me? She's basically saying like, oh my God, why are you giving me that look? Like, cause Phoebe's that, you know, staring at her like that. So I would recommend actually taking a short moment before you get into that next section, the why, what means this, to register, oh, what are you doing? You're looking at me weird. She actually has to kind of register it. So you need to see that moment land for Rosalind. So the next bit, she's just reaffirming, I, you know, I don't, I don't think you're special. I see no more in you than in the ordinary of nature's sale work. So basically she's just saying like, you're no better than anybody else or anything else that nature makes. Rosalind, honestly, some of the ways she describes things, some of her language, I'm like, man, like she's very, very clever. So she does have a lot of wordplay. Sometimes you just gotta be like, I get the gist. <laughs> Rosalind, we get you're clever. Shut up. I'm so judgmental of Rosalind, oh my God. Odds my little life. This is another one that's like by my faith. It's kind of short for God save my life, but they didn't say God on stage back then because it was considered like offensive. Um, so it was just another kind of like expression like, oh my goodness, it's sort of like that. I would personally kind of bring that in together. Odds my little life. I think she means to tangle my eyes too. So she's like, she's realizing, oh, hang on, wait, wait, wait. This girl is trying to get, me to fall in love with her as well. Back then they thought that eyes had like beams that actually came out of them. So in terms of Phoebe, like being like, I'm going to kill you with my eyes as she does to Sylvia's, they literally thought they were like things, not lit, like beams that shot out of your eyes. And so when lovers fell in love, it was like their eye beams were getting tangled together. I love this. 
as you can tell. So when she says tangle my eyes, basically she means like she's trying to get me to fall in love with her as well. But because of the look that they're giving each other and that Phoebe's like looking at her, she's like, ah, so she, that can actually give you something to play with in terms of like, you might actually want to sort of run away from Phoebe at that point. It's up to you. It kind of depends on how you want to play Rosalind and how kind of goofy she is in your version, because she could also just be relating to Sylvia's and be like, what is with this girl, right? Like she's trying to get me as well. Like I get it, This what is wrong with this girl? So just think about who you're directing that line to. Maybe it's to Sylvia's, maybe it's to Celia, maybe it's just to herself, maybe it's to Phoebe. So this was definitely to Phoebe here when she's saying, no, faith, proud mistress, hope not after it. And faith, again, is just one of those kind of little expressions. So she's using a lot of those kind of colloquial expressions here that are kind of like, good God kind of thing. So she's like, no, good God, proud mistress. Proud mistress being like arrogant woman. So it's actually, proud mistress sounds kind of nice, but it's actually not that nice. She's kind of being like, hope not after it. So do not try and come after me. Do, you have no shot. No, no, no. So interestingly here, I don't think she means you can't have me because I'm a girl dressed as a boy. I don't even think she means you can't have me because I'm in love with Orlando. She just means you can't have me because you're kind of ugly and arrogant. As she goes on to say, tis not your inky brows. Now keep in mind that anytime they're talking about like black and dark and stuff here, um, that in Shakespeare's language meant like ugly. So if they're calling someone like having dark hair, often that was like, you know, kind of gross. Fair was considered better. So yes, and yes, honestly, it is, it's kind of racist. It's definitely a different time kind of thing. So you got to find your own way around that comfort zone. But basically she's like calling her inky brows being like, kind of like she's got like intense, Intense eyebrows. I mean, how would Rosalind cope today? Everyone has intense eyebrows. Your black silk hair. So again, it's like, that's supposed to be a gross thing. Your bugle eyeballs. Now I always thought of bugle like, you know, a bugle, but bugles were actually like black um, glass bead kind of things. So she's talking like about like having like black glass beady eyes. Um, nor your cheek of cream. Again, it's something that sounds nice, but actually is not because she's actually talking about cream being kind of yellowy. So like sallow looking. That can entame my spirits to your worship. So all of that, she's just picking on Phoebe outright by insulting what she looks like. It is rough. I don't know about you, but if someone came up to me and was like, mm, I don't know if I like you. I mean, look at your hair or look at your, I don't know, weird face. I would be like, oh my God. But Phoebe, of course, is not worried at all because she's just fallen for Rosalind. Uh, not offended at all yet. It takes her a little while to figure out that she should be offended. Now she turns to Sylvia's. You foolish shepherd, wherefore do you follow her? Of course, we know that wherefore means why and not where. Like foggy south puffing with wind and rain. So basically it's kind of making fun of the whole like, you know, the storm of love. But in this case, it's actually just him being like, ah! <laughs> He's just puffing at her. And here, where she says, you are a thousand times a properer man than she a woman. I think this comes back to that relating to Sylvius more than she relates to Phoebe. She's like, I get you. I get the love struggle. We are more peers. You know, she won't say that because he's a little country boy, but she relates to him way more than Phoebe. And I don't think she's aware of this at all. I think she's basically like, well, Sylvia's just a better person. She's just a jerk. I mean, she is a bit of a jerk, but Sylvia is a bit of an idiot. So mm. and then she kind of goes on to insult Sylvia as well. To such fools as you that make the world full of ill-favored children. So basically because you keep chasing this woman that doesn't like you and this, if she gives in to you, this is what happens when we get couples that have like grumpy, ugly children. Rude, Rosalind. Rude. Tis not her glass, but you that flatters her. So this is like, it's not just her looking in the mirror and being like, I'm hot. It's because you keep telling her she's hot. And out of you, she sees herself more proper than any of her lineaments can show her. So basically, in your reflection, in everything that you're saying to her and reflecting back to her, she is seeing herself as more than she is, more proper, like better than she is, than any of her lineaments are like facial features are actually telling her. 
you're blowing her up. <laughs> now back to Phoebe, but mistress, know yourself. So she's really like, I'm gonna tell you what's going on here. She's really gonna take Phoebe down a peg. Down on your knees and thank heaven, fasting for a good man's love. So basically like, be grateful here for this nice dude that's chasing you. And possibly best line ever in Shakespeare, for I must tell you friendly in your ear, sell when you can, you are not for all markets. Oh my God. So if you've never heard that before, I love it because it's really like, I'm gonna lay it out for you straight. Settle. <laughs> because you are not for everybody. <laughs> the hot ones are not gonna be after you. Rough, Rosalind, harsh. Oh my gosh. So do think about how you're going to deliver that line. It is reasonably well known. So you can play it as like a bit of a gag, but also you can play it as like a, I'm going to be kind to you. I'm going to be, my cruelty is kindness. Let me come and tell you the truth. I am your friend. <laughs> so when you can. And the next bit actually ties in, but it's not as well known. Cry the man mercy, love him, take his offer. Foul is most foul being foul to be a scoffer. So this line is actually simpler than it sounds and it does need to land quite well because it's a rhyming couplet. So do get yourself comfortable with this line. What she's saying is the worst type of foul, and that's why I kind of emphasized most, like I stressed most, most foul. Foul is most foul being foul to be a scoffer. The worst kind of foul that you can be is the kind of foul that scoffs at people. And again, that really does relate back to her, I think, fear of someone shutting her down. She's saying that the worst thing in the world is someone that like laughs at someone else, that shuts them down, that scoffs at them. Definitely to Rosalind's deep dark fears. And that is that whole epic monologue. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments or requests, you can drop them down below. And other than that, good luck with your auditions and I will see you next time.